All right, I've got uh, a printout of a saddle, 1830 style saddle from uh, the Southwest. A lot of the mountain men used these because a lot of them traded uh, in the Santa Fe area. But uh, I'm going to use this saddle um, or something similar to it um, for this, this horse. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do a uh, armature for the uh, figure that's going on it, which is Jim Bridger. These are two photographs, uh, the, the best photographs I've got of Jim Bridger. There's only about maybe three or four photographs uh, of this gentleman, he, even though he died in 1881. Not many people thought of anything about uh, photographing the guy. And... Uh, this is a, the uh, size of the skeleton that I'm going to be doing, and uh, I tried to, to do the head the size of the skeleton, but then I just found out by comparing the skeleton to the size of the horse that I'm off. So I'm going to have to go up and redo that when I get around to it. I'm, in fact, I'm going to have to do it now. So I'm going to take a break and hopefully be back in time to work a little bit on this horse and the uh, saddle and all this other stuff. All right, be right back. Time to play with some clay. Okay, I've got uh, my armature made for the human, which will be hopefully Jim Bridger. I have uh, an instructional video that I sell that uh, covers the making of armatures for both human and animals. And uh, you might want to check that out. It's a, it's a, it's a method I came up with over the years, and like I said before, I've been sculpting since 1965, so it's a few years, and uh, I'll come back in a few minutes uh, after I get this thing uh, blocked in a little bit. I'm going to set it aside. I'm not going to put it on any kind of mount uh, right now, only because uh, I'm not ready to. But uh, uh, it's kind of hard to show you. I'll come back uh, in a few minutes with uh, something. I don't know what. I decided to replace the... Uh, horn that I had on here and try to make it a little more authentic with the uh, the large one that I see in the uh, drawing and uh, we'll see how that works out it certainly makes the saddle more interesting looking now, there's a series on TV a long time ago and it was part of the uh, Return to Lonesome Dove or the Lonesome Dove series. And it was uh, showed the beginnings of uh, the two main characters of uh, Lonesome Dove and how they started out as uh, rangers back in the uh, 1840s or that period, time period. And uh, they rode saddles like this. Some of, some of those guys that uh, were rangers, they rode Spanish saddles like this one. And uh, I remember seeing this kind of horn on one or two of those saddles. So I know it's authentic for the period.
I'm thinking of putting a bear skin or a buffalo skin covering on the uh, or over the saddle only because I think that hours of riding in a saddle with a big opening in the center would be a little uncomfortable. It might be cooler, but uh, it just seems like it would be a little more uncomfortable on the uh, posterior if you rode for several thousand miles on one of these things. That's my way of thinking as a old guy who looks for comfort in everything I do. I got a real late start today. I had a uh, email that was a phishing email and I had to clear up that before I could come down here. And it wasn't until just before I came down here that I found out about it. There's a scam going on right now and I'll tell you about it I was being charged $299 for to renew my Microsoft whatever well I never initialized anything like that and so I called the financial company that uh was billed and I was supposed to pay that bill. I called the company and they said it is a phishing uh, scam going on right now. So if you get a bill out of the blue for something that you didn't pay for, you've never dealt with, do not reply to them, reply to your financial service and uh, then send them a copy of the email to their fraud department so they can investigate it. That's, that took me about an hour and a half today. Those type of things really, really irritate me. Okay. Now the strap for the uh, the cinch. This attaches around the pommel to a uh, ring or metal ring, and then the cinch goes off of that. And that's uh, how that's constructed to do anything. I am going to put this on here because I noticed in the photograph the uh, it looks like the saddle the cantle of the saddle has uh, this feature on it Before I can put Jim Bridger on the saddle, I've got to have a lot of this taken care of. I'm not sure this is right. I might do a little more research before I finalize that one. I just got to make sure everything's straight and even and... balanced.
All right, I just connected the uh, rear rigging strap to the ring. And uh, that's an interesting thing. Now, I haven't got it connected there because I'm going to have saddlebags uh, hanging off this or something hanging off there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. All right, everybody, that's going to have to do it for today, and I'll see you guys tomorrow when I pick this up. Good night. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.